Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to create a procedural mushroom. You can see it has quite a complex structure along the cap and underneath it comes with all those gills. So um, the way this is set up is basically um, a torus and along this torus we are going to, after a bit of displacement, we are going to make curves run from outside to inside and with a few more steps we can thicken it using volumes. We bring in the gills underneath based on the same set of curves and then we remesh the entire volume to well, get a model. You can download the file for free on Gumroad. Constantine underscore Magnus has the hip file available for you. And I think now we can start from scratch. So in a new geometry node, which we will call mushroom, you would just set up a circle. And the circle should be made of polygons. So we will just put it flat on the ground and use maybe 120 subdivisions to get started. Make sure to enable the point view and also smooth wire shaded. So once we set up a sweep node, we could either bring in another or a cross section or just stay with the round tube, which does the job quite nicely. So that would be our torus. And the reason I haven't used a torus primitive right away is that we can here create UVs easily. Let me just switch over to the UV view using spacebar five. And you can see as soon as I activate and normalize UVs, I get the entire surface wrapped up inside a square. Now, just to understand better what is going on, we will use a color node set to vertices and use a ramp from attribute on the UV coordinates. So that way we can see where the seams are and the horizontal one will be used to split the torus. So let's use a vertex split and this will refer to the UVs. So as soon as we are crossing over this tolerance from here is one, there's zero, it will be split up. Now, the reason we are doing this is because we want to um, remap the positions on uh, its own surface. So with an attribute wrangle, we will refer to the UV coordinates. Let me just name this to remap positions and we would like to have first our uvs which are currently stored in the vertices so we will just have to refer to them using our underlying vertex now what we will do is we want to fit them into well the space between the seams so let's just think about this a little bit first what we need is um, to use the UVs which we already access here and then we are going to create a shift so vector shift would be um, <clears throat> based on a noise and to make the noise repeat we are using a periodic noise so we will refer to uv.y, which is the direction, the horizontal direction, so to speak. And we are going to multiply this by a custom frequency and set the repetition to one. Uh, in the end, all this will be multiplied by a amount. So of course we are lacking the frequency and the amount. So let's just expose two parameters. One is the frequency and the other one will be the amount.
All right, as soon as we click on this button, we can bring in a bit of frequency and some amount. And um, let's perhaps start by uh, visualizing the shift so we understand better what is going on. So you can see some waves when I change the frequency and the amount would be the strength of this effect. Um, now, you probably have seen if you use some uh, float value that there is a bit of a split in this pattern. So it makes sense to actually floor this down. So the frequency is always set to full numbers and for more convenience you would perhaps uh, change the frequency to 10 and give it a bit of room so you can play around with this. Alright, um, this was just for visualizing purposes. Of course what we want to do underneath is remap the UVs. So in the end what we want is a new position based on our own surface so we use the UVs to access different positions. It's using UVs and we are bringing in our remapped UV coordinates. Now as of now they are not remapped so we want to use the shift along with an X bottom and an X top value which is basically the band coming from each side. So one is uh, coming from uh, this direction and the other one from the top. So let's see how we can do that. X bottom would be defined based on our UVX which is the horizontal direction plus our noise based shift value X and plus 0.2 which will then lead to um, this seam being pushed along here and the float x underscore top will work very similarly. We add or in this case subtract something from uvx minus shift dot y in this case. So it looks slightly different. All right, both of these will be um, added to uvx. We can safely overwrite this vector component by, um, well, not exporting it afterwards. So uvx equals to fit 01. We know it's normalized, so that's why we use 01. And then we squeeze it into uh, x between x bottom and x top. Now in case you're wondering why this doesn't show up, we haven't exported this yet. So let's set VATP to our new position. And then as soon as you move the sliders, you can play with um, basically the amount and um, the frequency, just like we have discussed this. And you can also, I mean, change this value or bring in a own slider for this. Let's do this quick float. I call this padding. Because I'm lacking a different word for it. And we'll just set the padding like this. And then you can bring it in and out like that. Great. In case you're wondering, we are of course going to displace this even further. This is just a start. but. As we have split it, we have to heal it up with a fuse again, which will um, heal the horizontal split we had there. And I think the next phase would be um, to displace the surface. For that, we can just use a mountain node, which of course is a bit overkill for what we want to do, but we can bring in a bit of variation there. I like to only push it outwards along the surface, so I disable center noise. And that would be the shape for now. And next I want to 
reuse the UVs we had here. You can also create an own attribute, but I will just copy this and create a new attribute wrangle, which I call mask. Now what I want is I want a soft selection of the outer edge here. And for that, I will just mask the UV direction again, the UVX in this case. So let me just illustrate this. We are um, going to ask the user for a bandwidth. I will set it to 0.7 and then um, again use a fit function for my mask. So we are again fitting the UVX from band to 1.0 and basically normalize it by squeezing or extending it from 0 to 1. Now this would be the mask and in case you're wondering what it's, this is looking like, we will just set up a color so you can see that there's a soft transition from outside to inside again using the underlying UVs. So the next step would be to do something with this selection. So we want to uh, set up a for loop which will iteratively remesh our surface. We can keep the rather low edge length, um, which is 0.2, so we don't make this too detailed. I just want a bit more of smoothness there, so you would set the smoothing maybe to 0.5. And it is repeating this uh, four times or so. We don't need to do this too often. And what I want to do is I want to displace the outer edges here, which we can do with a relax node. Now the, the relax node can be a bit heavy, so let's not connect it at first and just set the iterations to two. Reduce the point scale um, to 0.2, excuse me, to 0.02. And instead of P scale, we are going to use our mask. So this will be relaxing in 3D space. And once you bring this in here, you will see that the outer borders will move a bit more freely. You can also experiment with the edge length and um, with the band we have created. So if you bring this in further, it will perhaps uh, grow in a bit more and all these waves will behave a bit differently. Now, um, this step of course is optional, but I think it adds a bit to it. Now we use a subdivide node afterwards and you see that we get these uh, kind of cells. So we should switch the algorithm to a s open subdiv loop. That way we can keep triangles. Now comes the essential step I'd say, which is um, creating paths. And first of all, we want to turn this mesh into a top and a bottom curve. So we can use the divide node for that. By removing shared edges, we get two pieces and these polygons need to be unrolled using an end sop. So we unroll with shared points and we would just scatter points on these curves. Now to make this a bit more flexible, you can work with a density scale, although uh, more important will be the mesh we are using here. If it has more subdivisions, then there will be more options for the pathfinding algorithm to find new ways. Otherwise, it will all collapse. <clears throat> Let's, let me show you um, how this is working. You would use a find shortest path node, which can refer to a second input. And now it's asking for start and end points. We don't need all this, but start and end points should be there. And we don't have any groups and I would not explicitly create one, but uh, we can do this by setting an output attribute in the scatter node where we can ask for 
the original primitive. So the source primitive is referring to these underlying curves. They should be named or numbered 0 and 1. And just to make our procedure more reliable, we should sort these primitives by the y position, so by their height, and then the source prim will be written in there, so we have 0 or 1 on all these points. So what we can do now is we would just say add source prim equals to 1 is our starting points, and the end points would be set to 0 then. Now all of a sudden all these outer points move inwards along these paths and just to illustrate they are using the edges of the underlying mesh. So if you feel like you want more variation you would just increase the depth to say 2 and then all of a sudden you get more paths here. One thing to notice is that there are lots of curves sitting right on top of each other. So you see they use the same paths, they run along the same edges. And just for academic purposes, we can have a look at this once I fuse and polypath this, I get uh, rid of all these redundancies. So once you explode this now, you'll see that we saved up lots of um, curves. So you can also see down here, if you right click, excuse me, if you right click on the info panel, you can turn on the geometry information to examine better whether you just created new curves or whether you saved some. We, however, don't need all this. I just want my paths and we should turn on points to see their resolution and feel free to experiment with resampling them with subdivision curves to make them much much more detailed and before you do that you can also smooth these curves a lot so that way they look a bit more organic with a low filter quality you get smoother results faster and just dial in the strength until you like what you see. Alright, um, that would be basically uh, the curves, but what we would like to get is also the original surface normals. So we should create um, some normals first. On this geometry you see they are not uh, point normals yet, so what we can do is set them up, normal set to points. We will blur them out so they are much much smoother yeah why not like so and then we would like to transfer them to our curves attribute transfer would bring them over as of now they maybe a bit jagged so what you can do after you bring in the normals and also the vertex UVs you would go to conditions and we don't need a distance threshold but maybe a blend width and then we should set the sample count to something like five to get even smoother results. The reason I'm so careful about the uh, normal transfer is that we are going to use this when we now thicken those curves into a volume so this should work out and the basic idea is to use the VDB from particles this is why we need a rather dense curve here and again VDB from particles is a way to actually thicken up these curves now First of all, we are left with this, so we should decrease the point radius quite a bit. I will use 0.08 to get started and the voxel size should be 0.003, which is very, very detailed. But I'm afraid we are going to need this kind of resolution to actually display all the 
details later. Now, the result we are about to get, it's still um, calculating a bit, will be basically pipes, but I would like to give them a bit of a direction. So what we are going to use are these before mentioned normals. So let's go back a step and just first of all set up an attribute wrangle which is going to be creating which you're going to use to create a velocity attribute. I will call my wrangle cap extrusion and um, create another attribute wrangle which is going to be called gills extrusion. Let's start with the gills and the basic idea is to again bring in the UVs so you already know vector UV equals vertex on our input stream and we just want to know the underlying UVs there and based on this we create a mask so what we do is we set up a ramp curve I call this fade gills so I can control the length of the gills along the shape so UVX is what I will use for that and we can set up this ramp using B-spline interpolation to make it smoother and then you would just keep the gills very short on the bottom and make them longer um, towards the top so the gills should be happening a lot right underneath the cap and be very short along the stem. Now to feed this into uh, the VDB from particles later we need to define a velocity attribute refer to our normals which should be normalized because we haven't done this yet and multiply it by the mask. Now let's copy the code over to our other wrangle and we would add just um, one more feature which is the scale. So we want to drive the thickness of our um, caps basically or yeah, the, the entire mushroom really. So a channel ramp by the name scale would also work based on uv.x. As soon as we click on this little button we should get two curves. Um, the, the fade for the gills is um, basically not the gills but the fade of the cap and that way we should again use a beast line and we can choose um, any shape we like but it makes more sense to have something built up on top of the caps on the very top and it shouldn't happen too much along the stem again and for the scale I want the bottom parts to be rather thick so I would start with a high value there and in the middle it can be a little bit slimmer and then it gets thick again like so. All this needs a bit of time we don't take our time for that it's just a demonstration and now the VDB from particles will work with all these um, um, velocity or place on velocity as soon as we um, first of all invert the direction and also set the p-scale to our own custom scale. Now as soon as we switch over to VDB from particles we can um, expect the footprint to stretch our shape along the velocity when we switch it to velocity trail. Now there will be a few new uh, options coming up. One is the vert velocity multiplier which is basically the 
length of our additional shapes. I will reduce this to 0.2 and the spacing can be lowered a bit so the effect is a bit more obvious also for learning purposes. Let me show you this. And as soon as it has been calculated, you will see that now um, it's not just drawing the curves, but you actually get these nice shapes on top. Now, of course, this is um, quite dramatic in a way, and we rather expected this on the bottom side. So um, let's see how it develops as soon um, as we take these and convert them uh, to a fog, if we like, or let's just VDB smooth them like this. And there's a filter radius we can increase so the voxels get blended even more. And the number of iterations will obviously also help to kind of tame this new structure on top. Now, in order to combine this structure with another one below, we don't have to union this. All we need is VDB from particles again. So I think we can just copy the node we had and possibly escape the calculation because what we need first is our second input stream and there's a merge with reference VDB which will basically make the node still do its job but at the same time bring in the other geometry. So after this has been calculated we can experiment with a few parameters. I think most important would be the radius scale which should be reduced by half so the gills underneath are a bit thinner and the velocity multiplier would be the length of the gills which can be extended. Now as you may have noticed this is a rather heavy process with, which takes a lot of computational time but we can think about the next steps now which is converting uh, these shapes to polygons again, but not before we smooth them a bit. So VDB smooth, I think SDF, and that would uh, smooth out the entire voxel field a bit, which helps for making this look organic. All right, then I think we are good to converting this from VDB to polygons and you can see this brings this uh, typical squarish structure on our mesh which we perhaps want to get rid of. We can, if you want to invest a bit of time, remesh the entire surface so a target size of 0.005 would be needed with a bit of smoothing to capture all the detail and this will require a few more seconds but this in the end would be the mesh with um, perhaps a few million polygons but you get all the detail that are needed and in case if you are unhappy with a few details then uh, please just download the example file so you can see a bit better uh, how certain radii relate to, let's say, voxel resolutions or resampling values. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, thank you for watching.